See, that's why that's why you're on the podcast, man. I knew I knew you're gonna fucking add a whole new vibe to it. Absolutely, brother. Is it already rolling? We're going. Audio's going. Video's going. We're we're fucking going. We're live. All right, hang on. Uh, Chris Garza, uh, boom, tagged. Corona, California. That's where we're at. Coming soon. Live now. Party. <laughs> Facebook too, and Facebook. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, you know, like it, it, okay. Insta- Instagram goes to Facebook. You know, sick man. I rarely, rarely will post on Facebook. Yeah, like a face. The Facebook is just the mirror of my Instagram. Oh, That's of course. Just, I, sure. I mean, like some people back in the day when MySpace was a thing, they would be like, "Oh, I have a Twitter because I could post on Facebook and MySpace." Sure. At the same time, multitasking and. Sure. You know, I mean, I, I just like having things simple kind of thing where, like, it's like, hey, I post on one thing, it automatically goes to everything else, and yeah. it makes it easy. So Yeah. It's hard, man, the older you get, too, like, trying to keep things simple. It's fucking tough, man. Dude, absolutely. All right, well, today, uh, JD, thank you for uh, being, being here, man. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's fucking cool. I had a blast. I got to drive on the express lane. I was like, you know what, $7? Sick. Send it. Let's go. <laughs> John Douglas, hashtag uh, J Dog. J Dog. Headlamp Poppy. Headlamp Poppy. Who, <laughs> so who, her, who first came up with that? Honestly, at the top of my head, I don't really remember. Um, yeah. My longtime best friend, AJ. I mean, dude, we went to kindergarten together. Sick. He, uh, he uh, hang on, I'm going to fix my hat real fast. Because this boy. is boom shakalaka. All right. <laughs> my best friend, AJ. Um, I know he's totally going to be watching this too cool. when this comes out. Cool. But um, went to kindergarten together, 1999, 2000. Yeah. Um, used to live in the trailer park behind my house, but we like yeah. never hung out. Yeah. But he uh, kind of like got, you know, like inspired me to like say, hey, you should make an alias for yourself. Like, you know, where someone could call you and be like, yo, headlamp poppy, what's up? It's just like, boy. oh, hey, it's not just like John Douglas or John or whatever. Yeah. But, um, he kind of inspired me to like make an actual alias, online public alias, cool. just to put all my tech stuff. Because the one thing I have always had the fear of when posting online is I'm posting too much, people don't like what I post, yada yada. Like having the headlamp poppy Instagram page, which will eventually be, which will somehow spiral into the abyss of Facebook. Uh But we're also become its own website, become its own brand, so to speak. Cool. Um, I already do have an LLC, which is actually a very funky thing to get into. But at the same time, I was like, let's go. Let's do it. Full send. Just do it. But um, um, he just he inspired inspired me to be uh, to make it as an alias, so to speak, where it gives an online extra. it's, It's its own world, own identity. Or I could just post tech stuff all I want. I can post yeah. rigs. I can post you know things I'm doing, bands I'm working with, yeah. um, with no filter. You cool. know, as my own personal, like you know, all my personal socials. It's like you know, like I'll post every now and then when I have exciting news, when I'm getting in and out burger, and I feel this <laughs> meal is absolutely delicious, and I need to take a photo before I share it to the world. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, no, it just gives me somewhere I could post all my tech stuff too. And yeah. I get people hitting me up. I mean, I have people that follow me there that don't even follow me on my personal page. They just want to see the tech stuff. They just want to see what strings I'm using, you know, what guitars I'm working on before and afters rigs I'm building, etc. So, but um, yeah, my friend AJ is the one who kind of like inspired me to do that. That's cool. And uh, when we're, we were sitting down making everything, he goes, you already done the hardest part. You've already come up with the character. Or the the alias. You've already come up with the the slogan, which is "Stay Lit." Okay. <laughs> Dude, I did, I did that the first time, and I clicked my headlamp, and I was just like, "That's so cheesy," but I'm so about it. Let's go. So, but um, yeah, that's how that came up. Uh, I launched that in November. Cool. You know, it's just cool, and uh, a lot of friends, a lot of tech friends. You know, it's just it's something to do where with no filter. Cool. Well, cheers to a headlamp poppy. Mm. All right. Cheers to Headland yeah. Poppy indeed. And remember, yep. stay you. lit. <laughs> Love you too, already, brother. Already going. Cool. Yeah. How how'd you get into this whole scene of traveling circus and teching bands? How how did this whole thing oh, start, man. dude? All right. So the origin 
of me playing music in general was September of 2010. Sitting at home, going on Craigslist, looking for my first band, official band. My first band I ever played in was called Dead Sky Black Sun. Death metal band. Down the street from my house. Shit was lit. Uh, I was in the band for about three weeks. <laughs> it counts, <laughs> but, man. You're but in hey, there. You're I in. learned five songs. We played a show. My grandma came out on a Wednesday night to Chain Reaction. Full send. All in three weeks? All in three weeks. Yeah. I do. Wow. But like, I mean, I learned songs. <laughs> That's I, cool. I was just dedicated. So mm-hmm. time goes on. September 2010 um, is when I first started playing in a band. And then... About late 2014, early, like right at the start of 2015, is when yeah. I joined Spades and Blades. Yeah. Spades and Blades was my 10th band to be in, ranging from bands from three weeks, two months, five months, and then Spades and Blades. Oh, no, I, the, the band before Spades and Blades was a band called Face the Throne, cool. which arguably was my favorite local band I was ever in before I ever got into a van and started touring or actually getting on the road. Yeah. I was in that band for about two, two years about cut a record, did a video. We went from playing in the garage to headlining house of blues. Wow. Yeah. It was sick. And it was the first time I was ever in a band that was seven strings. No, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head, but no, it was great. Um, it was great. That was my favorite, arguably my favorite local band I was ever in. Cool. Joined Spades and Blades and immediately started learning songs, went on tour right away. It wasn't my first tour. I had done a tour at the late end, end of 2014. Yeah. Which I will argue was my worst tour I ever did um, because it was 12 shows, you know, two weeks worth of shows, two off days. It counts. 37 days. Oh, spread out. Oh, real spread out. Like <laughs> homeless in Orlando, Florida for two weeks. Yeah. It, I just dude, the the amount of stories I have from that tour alone, yeah, uh, insane. Anyways, so I joined Spades and Blades early 2014 or late 2014, early 2015. Immediately hit the road, um, spring, and then getting to summer. Did another tour, and then early 2016 is when I went on my first. I'm going to say real tour, straight up, like. A day sh- there was a day sheet. We had load in times. We were playing legit real venues. We had real crowds. It was like, wow, this is really sick. I mean, our fi- our final show was sold out Fonda Theater, which I will come back in a minute and say the highlights of Fonda Theater because it's a yeah. very it's a day I absolutely remember. Yeah. Um so go on tour in 2016, and it was Fear Factory and Soil Work. So two solid bands, uh, not a co-headliner, Soil Workers Direct Support, but then here's my band, Spades of Blades, and we're opening up for Fear Factory and Soil Work. Sick. So do the whole tour. Um, it was a buy-on tour, and we're not, we were an unsigned band. So like, mm-hmm. you know, we had to come up with the capital, and we had to get real creative to do this and get get on the tour. But the the thing is with Spades of Blades is every single person is so thoroughly dedicated. And that was the band I wanted to be in because those guys knew what they were doing. Those guys had a goal, had a future, and they're like, let's go, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. And I joined Space Blades. I let's go. So we go on tour, we come up with the capital, we go we do this thing, and tour is so sick. But I mean, we were grinding though. It was it was buying. We're not getting paid. We're slinging merch. We're selling CDs and we're getting I mean, we had a three I hired a three person crew for that tour. And I was like, I want you, you, and you on this tour to help my band, even though we're not getting money, but like we still like made it going through. Cool. So we do the tour, and um, the last or the fourth to last show was Las Vegas, and you know at the end of tour we get tired. We're like, man, I can't wait to go home. Um, you know, like you know the final stretch kind of thing. Yeah. And um. We're driving back from Las Vegas and our van dies. And we're like, yo, we got, we're like, we're almost home. We're all from LA or SoCal. So van dies. We, we went through, I think it was about five gallons of oil to get our van home because we, I mean, we're not going to be stuck in the I-15. We got to get home. 
you know, yeah. we can get home the final stretch. So we're leaking oil like crazy. You know, it took us about eight hours to drive home from Vegas, about four and a half hour drive, realistically in a van and trailer. Yeah. So we're just limping it home, get home. And that day we have a show in San Diego. What do we do? Get in a new van, like borrowed a van from a homie, drive down to San Diego. So I'm already worn out from end of tour. I'm home, but like, I'm not really home. And in this, in this thought process of my head, I'm like, you know what? Like I'm over touring. I had not even $150 to my name at this point. Uh, you know, cause like, you know, buying food, buying gear, you know, surviving on a seven week U S tour, but 150 bucks to my name. Um, start driving from San Diego or from home or LA to San Diego, get to the club, load in, you know, fear factories, like sound checking or whatnot. Sick. And I'm sitting in my van and I had already texted my boss at Starbucks before I was in the touring world. I was barista, you know, Hey, welcome to Starbucks. What my name is John. What can I get for you? Started today kind of thing. Um, and I already texted my boss. I was like, Hey, I think I'm done touring. I get home on like Tuesday. Well, can you hire me? I was ready to go back to Starbucks completely done playing music. Yeah. I had already made my dream rig. I had already met my dream girl at the time. Um, happily ever after kind of thing. I was done. Like yeah. I like met my goals. I was satisfied. 20 minutes after that text, as I was sitting in the front and the front passenger seat of the van, just like, and not even our van, just like some random van we were having texting my boss. Dino Cazares walks up to me and he's like, Hey, uh, you want to go to Australia? In South Africa in two weeks, I'll pay you a thousand bucks a week to be my guitar tech. And I was just like, huh? Like, okay, sounds good. He goes, all right, yeah, we'll talk about it. The, so the invite was there. So immediately, like, I had not given up on my music world, but yeah. I was like, this is actually really sick. Like, I'm going to go work and go travel? Like, okay. So we do the last couple shows. And at Fonda Theater, um, oh no, we no, the other thing too is we were driving from Arizona back to LA, and we have instead of seven people, we had 10 people in our van because we brought a couple of family and friends yeah. for the last couple of shows. And I'm sitting in the back seat of this van, and I'll never forget. I have this is why I still had an iPod classic. And I'm going through my iPod to play music. And my iPod deleted all of its music. Hard reset. I don't know the phenomena. I don't know what happened. But I didn't even have music. And so I was already like, man, this sucks. I have a four-hour drive. I can't even listen to any jams right now. So I'm like sitting there like, you know, the last like kind of things that are getting to me. Um, and then basically we get to the Fonda Theater. Last day of tour. High stress. Yada, yada you know, sappy, sappiness. And all of a sudden I'm sitting in the green room, you know, Fonda theater. It's got those little, like hallway. It's got the, 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 it's a circle hallway and there's like a green room, like surrounding it. It's super yeah, weird. Yeah. We did it on the, uh, uh, well, <laughs> the one suicide tour I was not on, but I was there for the last three California shows. Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was, uh, pure destruction every night. <laughs> uh, but no, basically I was sitting in this green room and the guitar tech of Fear Factory at the time, Max Karen, he goes, yo, come over to like, you know, the other green room. Like, we're going to have a chat. And I was like, oh, okay. I wonder what he's talking about. Dino, Max, Fear Factory manager, and me. Hey, so uh, you know what you're doing? Okay, cool. You got a passport? Uh, stipulation. I thought I had a passport. It expired. Oh. And I was leaving Australia in two weeks. Like, what the hell? Like, what am I going to do? So I was like, yeah. And Dino's like, all right, cool. You're hired. Instant. Like, I'm going from playing a show to going on tour, working for a band I just toured with. So I already knew their rig. I already knew the guitars. But, like, I was not, like, working, so to speak. I was playing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, May. Oh, God. I want to say it was, like, first week of May. 2016 is when I became an official guitar tech. I went from playing in the band to working for bands. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> actually my first guitar change ever, because I was shadowing the guitar tech, you know, like last minute kind of things, what to do. Um, 
my first guitar change ever, you know, you know, with like changing tunings or well, suicide doesn't really change tunings, but you know, giving a guitar over to someone and taking a guitar, uh, fond of theater. I trip over the stairs and I fall with two guitars in my hand <laughs> and you just hear the whole crowd sold out fond of theater hometown show. Ooh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like no. nothing happened. Nothing happened. Everything's fine. The yeah, guitars are still in tune. And Dean, I was like, what happened? What happened? I was like, oh, nothing. Just, you know, casual. <laughs> yes. So that was my first change. That was my first uh, time I ever did a guitar change professionally. Sick. Uh, fell and ate crap. But um, <laughs> yeah, so 2016 is when I started working for Fear Factory. And then did Australia tour. First time ever leaving the country for music. Immediately. 15-hour, 13-hour flight to Brisbane. Let's go. It's a brutal flight. Bru I mean... Um, the most brutal flight I've actually done, speaking of crazy flights, thank you. Um, the most crazy flight I've ever done was a nine hour flight with a four hour layover to an 18 hour flight. Oh, Cape Town, South Africa, Dubai, Dubai to LAX. Whoa. Whoa. Gets even crazier. Both of those flights. Okay. So this fear, this fear factory tour, the one that I'm. In 2016, Australia and South Africa, 10 flights in two weeks, ranging from an hour to 18 hours. And it's already a struggle to go to get up, go to the airport, load gear, get on a flight, go through security, get on, you know, get on the plane, fly, actually fly, and then land, and then, you know, get out of plane, get gear, get into a van, go to the venue, etc. So um, this 18 hour flight and this nine hour flight, the most brutal flights I've ever done in my life. I mean, I've had some crazy ones, yeah. but like these are the most brutal. Yeah. I had a child on each flight sitting next to me under the age of five. I love kids. However, Hey, my favorite color is blue. What's your favorite color? And you're like, mine's green. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mine's black, but like also at the same time, please shut up. <laughs> but um, at the same time, uh, we survived. That was fine. But it was we also flew Emirates, which was the, the it's like sports cars for for flights. Okay. You um, they have like twinkle lights up in the up in the the sky or the the roof, so you actually feel like you're underneath the stars as you're flying. Huh. And dude, it's it. Bougie. Never heard of that ever. E Emirates, yeah. Um, huh. Um, they're based out of Dubai, so that's how oh, it was their home, home, home terminal, okay. home airport. But uh, very high end airline. You know, if you like try to get up out of your seat, like to go look for water, like they're like, oh, here, here's water. Like they can like read your mind. Whoa. Yeah, it's gnarly. Um, but yeah, so we flew a nine hour and an eighteen hour flight. That's the longest I've ever done in a flight. Um, I'd say. My first time I ever left the country ever yeah. was in 2009, and that was L.A. to JFK, layover, JFK, yeah, JFK to Tel Aviv. And from JFK to Tel Aviv was a 15-hour flight followed by a six-hour flight from L.A. to JFK, or to uh, J JF LAX to JFK. So, you know, a day of traveling, basically a whole 24 hours, but... uh that was gnarly. And that was the first time I ever got on a plane to go leave the country. So so basically what happened with my Australian tour is I had a kid passport from when I went to out of the country a couple times, family vacations, and the one time I went to Israel. And it had just expired three months before, four months before. So I was like, crap. So took a, a loan out with a family member. Paid five hundred dollars to get a passport issued to me same day. Same they, day? Yeah, they had to have my they had to have my passport. Yeah. To buy a ticket, you can't just buy a ticket to go out of the country. That's true. And not have a passport. So That's true. Forked out, you know, stupid money. Got my same passport, which I still have to this day. Um, I actually have a really short hair in this passport. It's like in the awkward stage. It's Sick. great. Um, but I let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, 2016 is when I started working for Fear Factory. And that's how I got into professional touring. But I will never forget the day that I 
was getting ready to leave. I think my flight was at like 7 p.m. or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like one in the afternoon. And one of my family friends had shown up just to come hang out. I mean, like he had known my mom, you know, before she even had us kids. And I remember looking at my bank account while this guy was here. And this guy is, you know, well off, retired, but like, you know, a very wholesome family member. And I looked at my bank account. I still have the screenshot on my phone. Do you want to guess how much money I had in my bank account before six hours before an international flight for my first international tour? It's bad. Bro, a nickel, a dime, and a penny. Sick. 16 cents in my checking account getting ready to go. And so I was like, I probably need some money. <laughs> like, But at the same time, like, money wasn't an issue for me to go do this because I had the opportunity. The flights were paid. The transportation was covered. I was going to go work. But at the same time, I was like, let's go. Like, I got the shirt on my back. I got my tech box that I had just gotten a month before, which is the same still tech box I have to this day. But, um, yeah, I uh, went to Australia. I mean, I borrowed a couple hundred bucks so I could have the, you know, emergency money. And then Fear Factory spotted me some money, too, out of my pay, you know, just in case if something happened or I wanted to get a souvenir or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I was fine. You know, I was, like, ready to go get in the car with 16 cents in my bank account. So, and on the way to the airport, I went and bought a T-Mobile phone, and I still have that T-Mobile service to this day. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. I was like, yeah, I'm going to Australia right now. Give me a phone. That'll work. So, but um, yeah, 2016 is when I got into touring. Um, and through Fear Factory touring, I want to say it was like August, because the last tours I did with Fear Factory were the last times they went international. They, 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 did, they did one show after I had, was working for them that I couldn't do because I was on tour of suicide. Yeah. But uh, August 2016, I did Montebello Rock Fest and you guys were playing. And that was the day I met you guys properly. And, you know, I mean, mm. I'd seen, I had seen Mark before. Uh, I had met Mitch before, but this was the first time I was in a live music setting working for a band where suicide was. And you and DK came up to my tech world during Fear Factory set. Now, one thing is too is like when I'm when I'm working, I should not be on my cell phone. Like this, like you know, like you got to be yeah. in the zone. But I was pretty geeked out. I was like, "Yo, Garza and DK are like watching for my tech world. This is pretty cool." So I bust out my phone and I take a selfie with you guys. And you're just like, that. you're like, "Yo, like, okay, cool. This is sick." So. Do the show, pack up. And this particular festival was another one of those days where it was just like in and out kind of thing. It was almost like a drop and go. Yeah. But inverted. It was a drop and go, but for a show. I think that's kind of makes sense. I don't think so. Maybe. Who knows? We did a border crossing that morning. The previous night we played in New Jersey, drove 400 miles, border crossing, played Montebello Rock Fest at like two in the afternoon, two 30 in the afternoon bus call was 5 PM. <laughs> like by the time you get done with sound check and you're at catering was the time we had to be loaded up and driving back to the border crossing. Yeah. It was crazy. So did the show, um, packed up catering that day was insane. They it had, was. they had the best festival catering you've ever had. They had a whole pig seared. They had like 30 lobsters you could choose from, Every side you could think of, because it, it was every top chef in Canada that they hired to do that catering. It was a maze. Literally, I felt like it just it was insane. Yeah, so catering was lit that day. Um, but you know how I formally met Suicide and it got like you know like hey like we see you we remember you. Um, my friend Max, I can never pronounce his last name. It starts with a G. But he now plays uh, guitar, lead, lead guitar in Falling in Reverse. Cool. And he's from Canada. And this was his first time ever playing, um, his first time ever playing his hometown on a tour. At cool. the time, he was playing for Escape the Fate. And you guys were playing the same stage as them. So I get done with my catering food and I'm all like, you know, food comaed out. But I walk over to his stage 
as they're playing, and I, you know, walk up on stage, you know, sit beside stage. In between songs, he walks up to me. He's like, what's up, John? Good to see you. Gives me a hug. I'm just like, oh, hey, nice to see you, man. I'm, I'm glad you remembered me, but like, yeah, we're homies kind of thing. Because, yeah. you know, he's just in, in the moment of playing. And I was like, it was like 4.30. And I was like, all right, got to get back to the bus. Or the, we had like a Sprinter van and go because we got to go at 5 p.m. to make it to Long Island, New York the next day um, for a gig. And uh, Ed walks up to me and he's like, yo, yo. I'm just like, who the hell? Who the hell is that? Like, who, who me? Me? You're calling me? <laughs> and uh, he's like, hey, my boys saw you teching and uh, we're looking for a tech. And I was like, oh, what's up, man? Cool. He goes, want to come hang? And I was like, sure. He had no idea that I was like. GTFO, gotta go. Yeah. But uh, I walk over there. I ended up being late for bus call, but fuck yeah. It, it, yeah. I was just like, hey, Dino, I went and hung out with Suicide Silence. And he goes, oh, okay, sick. Like, we're late, but like, all right, like, get a valid excuse. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but um, chatted with Mark, exchanged numbers, chatted for about 20 minutes, you know, talked about stuff. Yeah. And he goes, and this was what you just had, fir- no, this was the end. I want to say the end of You Can't Stop Me Cycle, but you guys had already recorded self-titled. Got it. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you guys had already done self-titled recording. Because my first tour with you guys, you guys were getting mixes back from Ross. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically chat with Ed for a little bit. Or no, chat with Ed, chat with Mark, exchange numbers with Mark. And I was like, all right, well, I got to go. I got to go back to... Uh, New York, you know, border crossing number two today. Um, get over, or I I walk to our green room. The green rooms are like like trailers, you know, like festival style. And I ran to you, and um, I was like, I don't know, like brushing my teeth or something. I don't know what I was doing in there, but uh, you're like, oh yeah, man, like what's up? Like nice to see you. I'm Chris. I'm John. What do you, what not? Chatted for a couple minutes. I was like, all right, well, I gotta go. See ya. And. Uh, Four days later, I got off stage in Spain to a text from Mark saying, hey, you're our guy. <laughs> it wasn't Sick. like, hey, here's here's how much we're going to pay you. This is the tour. It's just like, you're our guy. I'm glad. I'm glad he he fucking said that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It was just, I, would pro- I probably have a text somewhere in my phone. That's He's like, it's like, yeah, you're our guy. And I was like, all right, sick. When do we go on tour? And uh, first show with Suicide was not fast. 2016 oh it was that was the biggest home show you guys ever did i think but there was like forty thousand people there or something it was it, it was a lot yeah but like pressure was on and here's dino being all like don't fuck up don't mess up and like you're watching me and, dude, people are just watching dude, dude <laughs> I, like, i'm you know here's 22 year old kid with short hair you know in the awkward stage of growing the mane out um but it was six songs is all we played but like dust everywhere, yeah. first time. But like, because like, because it was the first time I ever teched three people, and oh, it was yeah. the first time I ever teched with a real Floyd Rose, and it was the first time I ever teched with real two amps. Oh, so it was like stress was on. But like, had a blast. Um, yeah, it was a great it was a great day. But like that whole the whole first tour was sick. Yeah. So it was, and then it was fun. the rest is history. We're here hanging out having brews and on the Garza show <laughs> yeah now and now we're here together and since then especially since that show we've uh we've traveled on many metal tubes together dude. On, on wheels and on, on wheels on wings, on wings yep all over the world dude yeah it's crazy it's crazy yeah. how fast shit just fucking changes five dude years, five years five years this year is uh when i first started working for y'all five years are you serious mm-hmm. 2016 and 2021 what? Wow! Yeah, crazy. Damn. What? What was your? Uh, what was your personal favorite tour? Ooh. And then, and then I'm gonna ask you later what <laughs> what's your least favorite. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, and, and then, and then later, I'm probably gonna ask you what what's your least favorite. Oh, my least favorite. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, favorite tour for Suicide, I would have to say. Oh man, you're putting me on the spot here. I mean, every tour was sick. Every tour was sick. But um, self-titled tour was cool. Um, I brought my mom to work that day. Uh, my mom was working at a school 
two miles from observatory. She came. Oh yeah. Yeah. Brought, bring your mom to work day. It was sick. Um, that was awesome. That was, that was a great home show. Um, um, yeah. Self-titled tour was sick. Um, Caliban tour was sick, but that was the first time most of the tours I've done have been headlining tours, but that was a direct support. So that was quick changeovers and whatnot, but yeah. Caliban just had a Kemper rig. So it was just, they had one little cubic foot of stage and the rest was room for activities. Remember but, that, that tour, I was the only guitar player with a tube amp on a, on that tour. Dude, you were. It was crazy. Mark you, was trying and, out the camper. You and Dan were both tubes because Dan had an SVT Classic. You had whatever Mesa head you could find from Capture Live. I want to yeah. say it was a, I want to say it was a double, a dual rec. But yeah, Mark was trying out Kemper and I was so excited for him to try out Kemper because I took his whole rig on yeah. a USB stick and I was like, dude, this is tight. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, realistically, when it comes to Touring with Kempers and tub touring with tube amps. If you could tour with tube amps, sick. I'm all for it. The real mm -hmm. OG sound. But if you're doing fly day after fly day after fly day, sure. The 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 word is the consistency of having the same tone, go to front of house, whatnot. I mean, you mm -hmm. are losing a little bit, but at the same time, it's pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, of course. I like tube amps. I got my 5152 that Mark gave me, and sick. I'm still restoring it. Um, you know, you guys now play EVH. Born of Osiris now plays EVH. Like full cool. send, full send. It's it's cool. I'm yeah. all about tube amps. Just gotta have a good case, gotta have it on wheels. I would like to hold my grandchildren one day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. just like not carrying stuff. But hey man, if yeah. you can have tubes and cabs, I love it. But yeah, oh, but yeah. every band well, what was funny though on that tour in particular is the, all these other bands had Kemper rigs, which is cool. But yeah. Their cases for their rigs were like 500 pounds each because oh, yeah, they got their so in-ears, they got their split, yeah. they got their monitor rig, they got their wireless, they have everything. And we get to some of these venues where you got, oh dude, I will never forget, well, my 23rd birthday was in Prague on that tour, the Caliban tour. Oh, and yeah. There was like 30 stagehands that day. And I was like, oh, this seems dangerous. Why is there so many people loading gear? Like, okay. But it was a four, it was like four or five stairways down to get to this club. There's no self service. Like, it's a basement of some, you know, Eastern European building. But then the exit was through the backstage and it was a single, like, three foot wide stairway. And you got these ba these bands with like, oh yeah, we're all Kemper, we're all DI, versatility, five hundred pound rig, yeah. trying to take it up, you know, with like no side room, so I, that was a blessing and because yeah. because like you know, Kemper, yeah, Mark had a little small rack for his Kemper, and you had a tube amp, and we just rolled it on up, yeah. so yeah, it was great. But um, yeah, you were the only guy that had a tube amp on that tour besides Dan, but you know, he could just got DI at the base. It works. <laughs> of, course, of course. Fucking Sam Sam straight, straight into PA. Mm -hmm. Still sounds sick. It does. It does. That's what we did for, um, that's what we did for, um, not fest 2016 because the one, the one thing, my first show ever, you know, sweating blood practically being like, I saw you oh sweating. God, I, felt, I felt bad, man. No, 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 no. It was good. Yeah. It was good. No <laughs> blood, no bones, no problems. Um, one of the quad boxes went out mid show. And I had to get it live again oh, yeah, bef happen. before Mark's solo. So I get the stage and he's like, yo, I need a quad over here. And I'm like running around like this. But Dan had Phantom Power for his bass DI. And he's just like, dong, 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 dong. And it worked. So, and I re returned on the amp. And just before Mark's solo kicked in, I think it was, it might have been Slaves or it might have been, I don't I forget what the set list was, but it came in and Mark's amp turned on right as Mark went to the lead channel. It was like it was, yeah. it was great. So that's sick. Yeah. Do you happen to have a, a least favorite tour? Suicide or in general? Let's do in general. Let's do in general. Yeah. Um there was a tour. Uh, so the only suicide tour I did not do was in 2018, which was Rage Fest. Um, I hired one of my longtime friends, Nate Jardin, to gu come guitar tech. Cool and cat, though. He's, dude, he's cool, cool cat. cat. Cool guy. He could build a guitar in his sleep. He's so knowledgeable. He's my tech god. 
Yeah. When I have tech issues, I send them up to him. I've overnighted him guitars. Oh yeah, in two pieces, and you know, puts them together. Yeah, he's 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 fixed some some stuff for me. He did a great job. Yeah, um, he's just incredible, incredible dude. Uh, he's from San Diego and now lives up in Portland. He worked G- GC Tech for a while, and yeah. then uh, now we just nerd out about gear, and he fixes guitars. I'm actually sending him a guitar. That's not two pieces, but three pieces next week. Nice. And uh, he's going to put it back together. So That's what's I'm, up. I'm excited. But um, the one tour I didn't do was, uh, or the one tour I didn't do suicide, and I took another tour, is I went to Europe and I worked for a band called Ministry. Big industrial band. I mean, I'm sure heard of them. Yeah. Uh, 17 people in one bus. Fuck. <laughs> um, lost my wallet on that tour. And uh, I was actually telling my younger brother the story today. I was like, yeah, dude, like I didn't have a wallet. I had to do Apple Pay with everything. But thankfully, my cards weren't stolen. It was just my wallet was lost. Yeah. You know, the sentimental value of losing a wallet, losing your ID. I lost my Starbucks partner card in that wallet. I was oh, b- no. bummed on that. Still works on my phone, though. You know, but um, I was teching four guys on that tour. So I was teching huh. two guitar players. Singer who played guitar occasionally, but he had a Bigsby bridge, you know, like the the Gretsch. Like oh, yeah, yeah. Super, they're cool, but they're super funky. And I had never worked on one before. So, I mean, you know, Googling first show, how to change strings on a Bigsby, <laughs> you know, boy. on my 2G t- T-Mobile European service. It was great. But um, uh, that tour in general was very stressful for me. And I was actually thinking about this on the drive over here because I was like, yeah, what was like my favorite tour was my least tour, you know, just like random general questions I could think of. Yeah. Um, but that tour in particular offered me so much money. And I was like, oh, cool, money, money, dollar sign. But realistically at the same time, that tour was great, but it was mentally and physically challenging. Attacking four guys, all analog rigs, 17 people in a bus, um, smoking cigarettes in the bus. Oh, dude, that dude, I, I could not do that. that it, 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 Six a.m. and okay, so the back lounge is where the smoking was happening. I was in the the Cliff Burton the suicide bunk at the front. I actually stole the driver's bunk night two of that tour. I just wow. took all his stuff out, put it in in the bunk I had, and I was just like, I need to be as far away from the back lounge. But um, yeah, it was just. I mean, that was the most the the tour. The end of it wasn't the. It wasn't the uh, the tour itself. It wasn't the crew. It was losing my wallet and not being able to go do things freely because, you know, it's part of every day when I wake up, I got keys, phone, wallet, pocket knife. Four things that are always on me no matter what. But um, I actually came home early on that tour. Um, basically, long story short, I... Uh, Al, Al, the singer from Ministry, comes off stage. We were in Switzerland, and he's like, hey, you got a cigarette? I don't smoke, but, like, I had a pack of cigarettes in my tech box. Don't know how they got there, but they showed up there. Yeah. Give him a cigarette. Where's a lighter? I don't have a lighter. Like, I don't smoke. So he's like, you don't have a lighter? Like, angry. Like, I've never seen someone so angry in my life. Mid-show, singing, looking at me, and he's, like, off the microphone. He's like, F you. And I was just like, what? Like, I already had a wireless RF issues this day. I didn't have a lighter for a cigarette, and it was just, it was chaos. Anyways, long story short, I ended up coming home early from that tour. The band didn't want to send me home. The TM didn't want to send me home. But the singer was, like, losing his mind that I didn't have a lighter for a cigarette after this, after this, uh, the show, or for the encore. Yeah. And, um... So I went home early. I was just like, you know what? Like, he was all like, I'm going to go, I'm going to, you know, book me a flight home right now. And just like total rock star both. But at the same time, you know, to each his own, totally cool. So I went home. But as I was in Frankfurt Airport, this is actually the only time I've had a physical mental breakdown where I didn't have a backup plan. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I'm an Eagle Scout. So Scout motto is be prepared. You know, if something happens, I need to be able to have a plan A, B, C, and D. Yeah. And this was the first time in my life that I was literally up, like, just, it was insane. So I get, you know, I go check in my bags. I have three bags with me. I acquired a case, and I had my tech box, my suitcase, and a Pelican for all my tech tools. Mm-hmm. I'm loading up the gills, you know, 50 pounds each bag. 
150 pounds worth of gear, my tech box, my backpack. And uh, they're like, all right, cool. That'll be, you know, 220 USD. No wallet. And I was like, oh my God, I can't pay for this. I was like, here, I have a photo of my ATM card. I have a PayPal. Here's my routing number to my bank. Like, I was just like, I had ev- I had everything. I like, I was willing to pay. I would have literally cut open a kidney out of my intestines and given the kidney to walk on that plane all my gear. Man. And they're like, sorry, like, if you can't pay for your bags, you can't take your bags. They didn't know the situation I was in, though. Yeah. I mean, like I said, oh, I lost my wallet. And, you know, I have this. They're like, well, how are you getting on a flight? It's like, well, I have a passport, which I thankfully had. And I was literally ready. I went through my bags. I grabbed the most valuable private possessions possible. And I was literally ready to walk on a plane with my tech box, my Jansport backpack, and leave everything behind. And I almost started to. And, like, I'm sitting there, you know, crying to myself, being like, dude, like, like I'm ready to, like, go home. That's it. You know, I have a 17-something-hour flight with a layover. And this lady comes up to me from American Airlines, and she's like, hey, like, we can tell you're not just faking it like we get it you don't have money like we like we see your pain right now we're gonna comp your bags for free and i was just like (gasps) like this is like yes i it was the one time in my life i really need a miracle and it happened and um they're like can you convert confirm your zip code confirm your name and i was like this 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 etc etc and they're like cool sounds good here's your bags or like you know here's here's your tickets you know have a good flight and i was like yo that's tight. And I went home and um, yeah, went home. And that was actually the, the last real tour I did of that year. Well, no, actually I came home from that tour, but then rage fest was the last three shows were in California. We were talking about Fonda earlier. Yeah. And the last couple of those shows were in California and Nate Jardin was like, it, he'd never done an, a tech tour. He'd played on tours, but like, it was his first tech tour, and he called me. He's like, man, this is just brutal. Like, yeah, like this and that, you know, breaking guitars every day. Like, it was it was a lot on him. It was, and, it was, and he's it was like, dude, lot. he's like, I need you. And I was like, all right, I'll come drive down to San Diego, you know, 100 miles, Ford Focus of Doom, you know, drive down. Yeah. And um, and he was and he literally told me, he was like, dude, I think I'm just going to quit today and go home. And I was like, no, you're not doing that. Like, these are my boys. You're going to stick this out. I know you're in your hometown, but you got to do it. You got to stay. And uh, he's like, all right. He just goes, I need you there, though. I need you there. And I was like, all right, sounds good. I'll be there. So he's like, you coming up to Fonda today? And dude, I'll never forget. I walked in the San Diego venue, and uh, your guys' trailer had broken down that day. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys had to drop the trailer off at Daymaker's house. You had to get a U-Haul. Yeah. And you drove down. And I was helping unload the U-Haul. And you guys were, you know, not panic mode, but just like, we got to get this stuff going. got to get this stuff going. And um, I forget who it was. Someone on the crew for suicide was like, oh, you guys aren't playing with cabs today or something. Or like, you guys are playing with one cab. And you, uh, I walk in there and I was like, Garza, what's up? You're, you're like, hey, help me load cabs. We loaded all the cabs in. It was great. Yeah. But um, yeah, did that, did that show, did Fonda. But the next day was in San Francisco, last day of tour. And Nate was like, dude, I can't do the last show without you. Like, I need you there. And I was like, dude, I had a family event the next on that. It was Saturday or Sunday or something. And I was like, no, like, it's my cousin's, like, family, you know, whether it was bridal shower or engagement party. I don't know, something. And, uh, like, I felt crappy for, like, I, I ditched it. <laughs> I ditched it. And I drove, yeah. I drove to San Francisco with Nathan. But I was like, he's like, please, 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 please. And um, Nate was like, dude, like, I'll give you a guitar if you come do San Francisco. And I was like, I mean, guitar or not, like, I'll still go do the show. But like, all right, sounds good. So at Fonda Theater, instead of driving back home to Anaheim, I just got in my car and Nathan. We just drove straight up to SF and we did the last show of tour. Um, but it was cool to like come back from such a brutal tour to do to come back straight to my family of suicide silence and like yeah. 
to the last. I mean, because home shows are like the most energy of shows because you got family, you got friends, yeah. you want to put on a good show. And I'm so glad that that tour ended in California. I mean, if it would have ended in Portland, I probably still would have drive- driven with Nathan to go do the fourth show. That's a good friend. Because that's what real friends do. That's but at the friend. same time, um, yeah, going from a brutal tour, going to a good ending of a tour, that was the highlight. And but then the end of that year, I'd only did one other tour, which is probably the biggest tour I've ever done, which was Danzig. And that was oh, yeah, yeah. teching for Tommy Victor. And that was only seven shows. So and that was it for that year. Wow. Yeah, thankfully, man, you fucking came out and helped helped Nate. I knew he was struggling, but there's nothing I I can do. I'm like, well, J Dog said you're you're fucking ready to tour. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you know, yeah. to, to to his credit, man, that was that was definitely a very heavy tour, and we were, me and Alex were even going more aggro than like usual. Yeah, I, I remember <laughs> that, dude. That yeah. last show too. Uh, Ed, I'll never forget. Ed uh, walked up on stage ready to play the song or ready to play Yolo it was the opening song. Yeah, and you guys were and Mark wasn't even on that tour. It was Lone no, Star from yeah. Darkest Hour. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, Ed walked up on stage, grabbed his microphone in his show attire, turned around, put it on the bass cab, walked to the green room. Like it was just like what? Like it was instrumental. I mean, yeah. like you know, the crowd sang along and whatnot. But yeah. then I think it was Darius from Spite was like, "Oh my god! Like, do I have to go do Unanswered right now?" Like he's, <laughs> he's like, "I'm not ready. Like, pinch me." And I was yeah. like, "Hang on." So during Yolo, I, I like I'm ran sick. up to Ed. And I was like, "Yo." What's going on? Let's do this. And Ed's like, oh, I'm not good enough on stage. I'm not doing it. I was like, bro, hometown show, last show at tour. I was like, just do it. And he goes, no, no, no. I was like, look, bro, you like, you can play the show. You can, in your stage clothes, you can grab your backpack and you can go get on the BART in the Bay Area and go home. Like, just knock it out. And, and he finally walked back and that was actually no joke. I think that was the hardest Suicide Silence show. The most... I don't want to say anger, but just like raw rage. Yeah. What's up? It's my mom. Hey, mom. Sorry, I can't you can talk right now. I got it. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Do not disturb was on, but my mom always has priority. Of Anyways, course. long story short, I think that that San Francisco show at Regency, I think it was Regency Ballroom, but it was the most just brutal, like with like four zeros, like heavy. And then once it was done, we packed up the U-Haul truck and we all went home. I mean, even though I yeah. wasn't even on the tour, I think I like found an all-access pass that someone had like dropped, <laughs> dropped or something. I was like, "Cool, I'm on oh, the yeah. tour. What's up?" <laughs> yeah, you're on. You're on tour now. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, the, even though I mean, going back to worst tour, best tour, I always try to find the best in every situation, no matter what, because mm-hmm. it's your mindset when it comes down to it. It really is. Yeah. Like I had a crap tour in Europe. I love Europe. The uh, I think it was my last last time I went to Europe. Yeah, I didn't go in 2019. Yeah, so that was the, last, the most recent time I've been in Europe. But um, I, uh, you always have to find the best in every situation. And coming home and feeling defeated, having to go to downtown Disney to go get a new wallet, I was just like, wow, like this is wild. Like I lost my whole physical identity in my wallet. John Ellis lives right by Disney, so I'm, I literally guys- am in the same square mile. As Disneyland. Yeah. I walk out my front door, I look it's at my right cats, there. I look at my garden, and then there's just <laughs> Disneyland Hotel. Cats yeah. first, garden next, and then Disneyland. Absolutely. But yeah, um, they always have to find the highlight in every situation, no matter what. Yeah, and coming home, doing those last three gigs was sick. And it stoked. So it, tur- it turned my moral compass around 180%. That's great. Yeah. So It was awesome, especially after such a grueling like month, especially for us, like seeing you. Six weeks, almost seven. It was, a, it, was, it was a long it, time. It was a long in, a, in, a, in a van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts, dude. And seeing you in like the last few shows and seeing Nate still struggle. <laughs> no, <laughs> poor, Nate, poor guy. Nate conquered. Nate conquered. Oh, after, he did. No, because oh, after did. that show. He did. After that show, his fiance flew down. Oh, and yeah. And they went to Disneyland. They took their engagement photos. And I'll never forget sitting um, at the Paradise Pier. Yeah. We sat like right next to the water and he, we all had an alcoholic beverage and we we're just like, he, you know, he shaved, he looked all nice and proper. And I was like, 
you did it, man. Like this is your reward. You get to hang out with your fiance now wife. I actually was got to, I got to be in his wedding the next year, which is actually nice. really cool. I flew up there. Yeah, you got married. Um, but yeah, we uh, he, you know, he I mean he he crushed it. He crushed that tour. I mean it was brutal, but at the same time, you know, there's some people that are made to tour. And there's some people that are just like working on guitars. So people that like jamming in jam bands. The people that like, you know, working on tech stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it's there's different. I don't want to say different levels, but there's just different passion areas and skill sets. Nate is just an incredible guy, super skilled in what he does. One of my best friends. You know, it just is what it is. So, but yeah. um, but yeah, um, yeah, that we went to Disneyland. I think that was actually the last time. I went to Disneyland. I think I might have went Fuck. one other time, but yeah, it's been a, while, been a minute. I see it every day, but it's been closed for the last year. So I know, and they just took took away the passes, huh? They did. Then well, they the basically, when the gates of heaven open up, everyone's gonna want to go in, but they, yeah, oh yeah, but they can only hold eighty thousand people. <laughs> yeah. So it um they'll they'll more than likely bring it back within the next ten years after everything settles down because this last yeah. year of you know pandemic and not being able to tour and you know so much of our normal daily lives has changed yep um the uh you know what, what was i going to say um is it's going to take a while yeah everyone's like oh i'm ready to go back to normal normal is not normal normal is a setting on your washing machine or dryer you know uh everyone Everyone has a different way of going about things, living their lives, you know, et cetera. But, um, yeah, it's going to it's gonna be a minute. But at the same time, I think the reservation system for Disney is going to be a good thing because there's only going to be – if they only want to have 40,000 people in the park one day. So sick. They're only going to have 40,000 people. And every ride is going to be a 15-minute wait. God, and so you get, sick. And you get to – yeah, it's going to be awesome. But at the same time, it helps keep numbers down. I mean, they're going to want to have as many people in the park to make as much dollars, but at the same time, they got to do it safely. So, totally. I wonder how much that ticket's going to fucking be. Um, I'll pay it though. Oh, dude, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. We're, we're all paying it, and, that, um, and that's what's fucked. One one day, I mean, out of all the jobs I could want to do in the world, the one thing I want to do is I want to drive the Disneyland train around Disneyland, and I will do it. Yeah. That that is a goal. I want to be able to go doo, doo. That's all I want to do. And drive I mean like not just once. I mean once would be sick, but at the same time yeah. like it would be so sick to drive that train around. Dude, you should go on your 30th birthday. Yes, but or I just do it. I next have year. a I have a goal before my 30th birthday. Everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, your 30th birthday." You know, dirty thirty. What are you gonna do? I mean, well, yeah. Mark's thirtieth birthday was uh, um, whiskey a go go, end of cleansing tour. Oh yeah, yeah. That I was to go back to the question before. What was your most brutal tour you've ever done? Yeah, my most brutal suicide tour was cleansing tour. Yeah, cleansing and Antilla where we just got somewhat violent <laughs> at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that a lot, was a lot that of shit was, going that on. Was, and, that was gnarly. And 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 to go in. To how great of a job you did, and, and we've and we talked about this last time we're hanging out. Where now we can look back and laugh. Totally, but, but dude, that tour, like that that last day, I was seeing red. I couldn't wait to get home. I don't think I got home until like ten a.m. the next day. So I woke up in the bus at like yeah, yeah it was a, it was a whole twenty four hour day. You know, wake up at ten, you know, load in at eleven or noon, and like that whole time I was up. You know, cleaned out the bus. Yeah. Got everything done, but uh, that was actually that's actually a crazy story. That's actually one of the, my most memorable, humbling moments of being a guitar tech. Yeah, was walking up to you in the bus or the green room or something. I was like, "Yo, you can't play your guitar today." The one guitar I had set for you because I lost the nut of the guitar. Oh, you were, you were freaking out. And I, I was, was like, "Who cares? It's who fine. cares?" Like, grab a Fender, and then now here you are. You know, as a Fender artist with a. Sep custom shop seven string like full send. <laughs> Crazy how, how things work out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just like I, I definitely during during this whole th- those couple years of just trashing shit. Like I mean, you were, you know, a lot of people don't really see behind the scenes, but you were my backbone during mm-hmm. that whole time where I knew like, no matter what we did, the show was going to be great and the next show was going to be great. Yep. 
you know, it's just so like, hey, you were. You, I, you were I, my I was the tech that years, was man. like, hey, if we're gonna light a guitar on fire, <laughs> let me make sure that you have a Zippo, a fire extinguisher, <laughs> the fire extinguisher, and you know, like something to like really start your guitar on fire if it came down to it. Like, yeah, dude, we had yeah twenty. 2017 actually you know what i take i I take it back my favorite suicide tour it was it was not self-titled it was the euro or the uk tour we did with these nuts yeah dude that was just every night destruction in the best way um i was listening to the 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 episode the first one with alex that you did oh yeah i have like 10 minutes left to go on it but like i wanted to like refresh on it cool but um that was my favorite tour that we did because you're like, dude, I want to break a guitar every night. And we only hit eight shows. Six shows UK, <laughs> two shows in Russia. And I was like, okay. So we got two cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. Four guitars in each box. Stacked <laughs> like this. Like when you ship an instrument, like... You pack it, you put it in a case, you know, you declare its value. These we did not care. They and were in a box, dude. Fuck I it. wrote in three different languages. I wrote in English, Russian, and Turkish. Do not crush. So I could not have the excuse of like, no one would crush this guitar. Yeah. Or these bo- f- guitars, plural. Yeah. And we shipped eight guitars from L.A., I don't know if we had a layover. We might have. No, I think it was a direct flight from LA to St. Petersburg. And we went to Russia and we broke. Oh, we did sick shows. Sick. Oh, dude, that, that was a horror story going from uh going from St. Petersburg to Moscow. I became tour manager that day. I was like, let's oh, go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah. but um yeah, we did eight, we did the breaking guitars, uh played baseball with a kick drum. Yeah, took took our kick drum on the freight on the train from St. Petersburg to Moscow, um, and did that. But yeah, it was lighting guitars with fire, cocoa. Oh man, that was great. That was great. Anyways, long story short, um, that was my favorite tour that we did for sure. Dude, it was it was it was de- definitely a fun one. It's funny how like things were kind of chaos, but you were always. People were telling me John Oaks is kind of pissed, but then you would tell me, "Dude, you should do this." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, what the fuck do I believe?" <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> the en- the energy was alive so well, so well. We we did it. We crushed it. I so. remember uh, at, at Coco, like there was like some word word got around what what we were gonna gonna do, and then like it got back to us, like don't light anything on fire because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's gonna burn down the venue. Right, and it's like a two hundred something year old. England building and like yeah, it's like an older venue. Yeah, but I was like, I'm an Eagle Scout. Trust me, <laughs> <laughs> Katie. You know? I think if you weren't an Eagle Scout, I probably wouldn't have listened to you subconsciously. Where like I was like, oh, people, maybe I shouldn't do it, and then you're like, do it. I'm like, all right, I did that. I did it. it was, it was scout, fine. scout motto: be prepared. Yeah, be uh, how, how I roll, baby. <laughs> I always I always see like a fire extinguisher in the, in the corner of like the stage. Oh no, I got. <laughs> I got I got Sick. one in my tech box now. It, it just oh lives there. God. You bet. So I mean, whether again, if we, you know, like to go back to the when what Alex was saying, like, you know, it's just like, hey, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do it, and it's just like, we just did it full send. Like, if we're yeah. gonna do it, we're gonna go all out. Like, yeah, you're literally heavy metal, Jimi Hendrix, full send. Oh, man. <laughs> so oh, man. yeah, but that was uh, yeah, I just had to be ready for anything. You know, it's. But also at the same time, it's having the safety of the stage, the crew, mm-hmm. the artists, the people in the show. But like, we could do stunts, we can make it sick. But at the same time, well, there's a. Woo, I live right by on. a fire station. I, I do too. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be super early. Man, my hat is just all. I'm gonna take this thing off. It's all good. I, I hear it here. But dude, during that whole time, man, you were you were my backbone. Yeah, you know, not now. Again, we 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 can kind of look back at it. My man, like John Douglas, helped me out so much, dude. Jeez, just just making sure everything was great and everything worked. And you also had other guys to take care of. Yeah, you know, I never had to. Uh, Mark with the Floyd Rose. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. I mean, I mean, the uh, like the player that Mark is, like he needs a Floyd Rose. He's, oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he's a Floyd Rose guy. I'm a hip shot guy, but man, setting up a Floyd Rose fucking sucks. I remember when, uh, when I had uh, 
when I had Ford Roses back back in the day, I hated changing the strings. Oh, totally. It's just it's like oh, I, I and I never got it either. Yeah, it fucking sucked. Well, the, the trick is when you're doing uh, when you're doing Floyd Rose, you go str- if you're not going to clean the neck, if you're going to work on the neck, you block the bridge. You just put something in, or, yeah. you know, a block. ESP told me, oh, put a AAA battery in. I was like, oh, okay, cool, sounds good. You know, whatever, <laughs> whatever. But like, you block the bridge, and that's how you do it. But if you're going to yeah. just change strings, mm-hmm. one by one. Oh, Actually, yeah, you know what? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, Speaking yeah. about Floyd Rose, true, here. Going back to Nate Jarden, yeah. So my very first tour I ever did with Suicide was 2016, which was uh, headline. No, it was a co-headliner with Whitechapel and us. Oh yeah, yeah. And so we did Not Fest, and then Nathan lives in Portland, and our first venue show was in Portland. Oh yeah. So he came out to the gig, and I was like, "Hey, this is my tech friend Nathan." Yada yada, chit chatting, and um, Hawthorne Theater was that venue. And there is no real tech room on that stage. So you have the fire lane exit door mm-hmm. for moving gear. And when I say a closet, I mean you have a closet for tech world. Yeah. It's this long little corridor hallway. I feel like I'm in an 1800s silo or like yeah. tiny silo. Yeah. So I set up, I set up tech world in this, this little room. And Nathan and I spent two hours after sound check. Teach, he taught me everything about Floyd Rose. Do this, do that, do this. Sick. And like, so like, he set me up for success on that tour. Wow. And but at the same time, I was like, oh, cool, now I got Floyds. I mean, you know, Tekken for Tommy Victor having th- four Floyds, three in the same tuning, and he didn't play with a tuner pedal. He would literally walk up to me, goes, oh, so let's switch a guitar. And it was all in the same tuning. It was the same guitar. That had, oh. it was like just revolting, or, um, huh. Um, I'm gonna think of another word. Um, I guess you could say revolving, revolving yeah. guitars. So yep. yeah, crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, Floyd suck. I mean, I have one. It's cool. Yeah, but like it is what it is. So yeah. Well, JD, I don't want to keep you uh, too too long. Thank you for uh, for being guest three, man. Absolutely, bro. This was absolutely rad. I'm so stoked. To Pretty sit fucking down cool, man. Yeah, dude. So much history in this room. I mean, got now the candles going. I know, obviously, you know you've you, uh, you've been in this room many, many times. You hung out with my uh, my family, my mom and dad. You know, you I, I mean, obviously, why why you're still like we're still with with each other, right? Because I mean, we, we're we're family. You know, my my mom, my mom and dad ask about you and yeah. see shit, dude. It's just like, so you know, how how's John doing? Yeah. Mama and Papa Garza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me home. Want to stay for dinner? I'll text and drive. Call yeah. me when you're here. I'm just like, yo, this is rad. Oh, you want you want some yeah. tacos? It was up. <laughs> one one thing in closing, I'll say. Um, no rush, man. Yeah. Um, out of all the bands I've worked for, teching, touring, etc., um, every band that I'm involved with, mm-hmm. for the long run, becomes family. Whether mm-hmm. if that's me playing in bands, whether if that's me working for bands, um, there's some bands that's a corporation where they're like you know, mm-hmm. this is when we load in, this is when we start, this is when we do this, you know, the schedule. I mean, dude, there's there's even one band where if you don't answer your radio, you get charged twenty five dollars. Whoa! Oh yeah, straight up, straight up. Jeez. And you're a fan, you're a fan of this band. I, I won't say it, but uh, right. <laughs> but yeah, no, straight up. There, it's it's a full on touring corporation. But like wow. for uh, for me, working with Suicide and also with Born of Osiris as well, mm-hmm. those band, it's a family band. We jam in the garage, we hang out, we go on tour. You know, we're a full functioning band. Yeah, but um. The, those are the bands that I cherish most to heart and am in it with the long run. Spades and Blades, the band I play in, is the same way. Um, when when is this air? This air is Friday? I say another... Another a, week? A, a week and a half. Week and a half? Now. Okay. Yeah. So I haven't announced this yet publicly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do, I, yeah, I, yeah, did, yeah I did join a new band. I've been working with them the last couple months. Uh, the band is called Last of Our Kind. Um, our EP cool. comes out on Friday the 19th. Music video comes out the 20th. And there were several bands I was like looking to join as well. In addition to Spades and Blades, and I was like, man, like I need to join a band that's going to be a family. Like I don't want to just join a band yeah. just because it's like, oh, we're just making music and hanging out, rock and roll, you know, whatnot. Yeah. But uh, nah, joining Last of Our Kind was such a cool thing to do because I show up. We have band practice, but it's like a family. You know, the drummer's the drummer's dad. 
He's got goats. He's got chickens. He's sick. got vineyards. Yeah, um, sick, man. That's you know, cool. my, my brother David's home right now, and uh, I took him down there last week, and uh, we cool. all hung out, had carne asada. Um, David, who's a Marine and drinks a lot, um, Mark, Mark, I invited Mark to come hang too. And David and Mark were all like, Mark nerds out on David and likes David and David nerds out on Mark and likes Mark. So like it was all hanging, but Mark texts me the next morning. He goes, bro, I have not been this hungover. (laughs) (laughs) It was great. Um, but yeah, um, I joined a new band called last of our kind, um, self-titled EP is already out. Uh, music video drops on Saturday. Um, the 20th and, uh, I'm excited. It's a, it's a band where I've gone from being the youngest person in a band to now being the oldest person in a band. Wow. And, um, dude, it's, it's really cool. It's, uh, it, it's like joining a family. And, uh, yep. the other thing I was going to say too, my personal lesson that I've learned in the last decade, I or last half a decade since I've started touring yeah, is if you're going to go do something don't let money be an influence. And that's something I kind of like had to really sit and Dude, like learn because like hundred percent like, like going back to like me going on my first tour and having a diamond nickel a penny in my checking account to seeing all the doors. I just went and went with it. Like money wasn't an option. Things come and things go. Mm-hmm. Money is just a tool. Yeah. So when I went on this tour to Europe and I was like, Oh, I'm making all this money. Yada, yada. But like, it was the worst tour of my life. You don't let a dollar sign or don't let uh, a, a substance be your divining factor, so to speak. And yep. uh, working with Born of Osiris, working with Suicide, playing in Spades and Blades, playing in Last of Our Kind, the family aspect is there. I could call any one of those people from any one of those four bands I'm involved with and be yeah. like, hey, man, like, I need cheering up today. What's up? You know, because if I work for a band that, you know, gets charged $25 on the radio, my artist is like, oh, email my manager. E- you have your people email my people or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy stuff. But uh, dude, I uh, yeah, that's uh, it's 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 really excited. Um, yeah, my guitar player Danny, um, he was actually my client originally with uh, with uh, guitar teching, and oh, wow. he brought me guitar. I mean, I met him through Suicide. You yeah, know, him yeah. and Mark used to live together. And um, great was, cat, man, dude, great cat, very talented cat. Uh, yeah. Danny Molinado, no, Danny X Molinado on uh, Instagram is his yeah. tattoo work, yeah. But um, great artist, yeah. Just uh, it came down to it where like he's like, Hey, man, you, know, you want to join my band? And I went down to go hang out, and we got like seven acres of property down in Temecula, you know, yeah. it's like room for activities. I was just like, dude, like, I feel like I'm like part of the family, like, this is like sick so that was my immediate answer i went with but um sick, but yeah man. just uh i love what i do wholeheartedly and uh this is so cool to sit in this room and do a podcast and actually like just you know talk and live life and you know so much history is in this room so i'm excited i know so. it's cool man it's cool that you you know like you like you knew the room before it was what like what like what it is now so you know you like you can kind of feel like the vibe you know Absolutely. It's, it's badass dude the, the the vibe is real this is a. Uh, as I said earlier, before we started this podcast, this is the birth birthplace of deathcore. <laughs> oh wow, crazy! So. Many many years ago, back back in my day, Dude, back in my day, I, I was in second grade. When I don't, you, I, I, don't was think... in, I was in second grade when you guys did your first EP, <laughs> two thousand two, full send. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but dude, okay, so uh, so you already announced uh, the the info for for your last of our kind, yeah, for your for your band. Uh, is there where where can people find your band and then where where can people find you okay so band um the easiest spot to go is last of our kind band.com uh instagram facebook um those are the main ones mm-hmm. ep's already out spotify and on apple music um cool. last of our kind that i will say there is a lot of bands called last of our kind just look just look for the most brutal looking one and you'll see it. It's a good indicator. Um, d- do not click on the dance music one. I, for the love of God, just do not. It's, it's great. It's awful. Um, but, um, and then my Instagram personally is I am John Douglas. That's all my socials. And then for all my guitar working stuff, it's headlamp poppy. Um, you can find my Instagram from either or yada, yada. But, um, yeah, that's where you could find me in the, the world wide web or cool. It, coming to a venue near you once shows 
Come back. <laughs> sometime, sometime in the future, you know, we, we just got to still be here. I told, I told myself the day the world shut down, there would be two years. I, I think. Damn, you're right. I was right. I was right. So. Just like it's like other moments in my life, you knew before me. So I try. Fucking, fucking I try. Bad, badass. <laughs> right, JD. Again, thank you, man. And course, I'll, man. Right, everybody, that's it. Thank you, guys. Later. Later. Cool, man. Dude, so sick. Oh, we got to I got to do a quick picture, man. Totally. No, you're good. Sorry, the vibe, but I nah. I don't got. I don't got my.